time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Time to read about the fallen people that we haven't talked about since they've fallen. When they've fallen, they've become fully human, and so all of their secrets are revealed. We'll start with Smudge here. Smudge the Mall Santa, secret fantasy, to use Ronald Reagan as a ventriloquist dummy. That's funny, I always read that as Ronald McDonald until this one point. Uh, unusual fact is saw himself this morning on a milk carton. Pet peeve, state troopers who, who pulled him over to look at his wife. So he's married. Sorry, Shell. Um, but who knows? Um, he'd like to meet his dad. He can't drive 55. The car shakes at 40. That's his personal motto. My personal motto, I can't drive 55. The car shakes at 40. Most proud of 1987 dwarf tossing champ. Reputation in high school likely to survive senior year. Three words that describe Smudge are birth control poster child. So that's Smudge. And then who else passed away? Oh, it was our Up With person, uh, Jules. Jules is a member of Up With People, which I really recommend you check them out. Secret fantasy to be sent around the world by a secret admirer. Unusual fact, toured and performed around the world with Up With People, is what I'm assuming, because they tour and perform around the world. Her pet peeve is racism and missing the first part of a movie. I would agree with that. That's my favorite parts of movies is the beginning. She'd like to meet John F. Kennedy. Her personal motto is, those of us who don't exceed our limitations never really know what they are. Should be what, who they are, I think. But most proud of herself. Um, reputation in high school, most encouraging. Three words that describe her are spontaneous, educated, flirt. So we've done our um, form changes for this coming turn. And the game looks like it's going to be over. This is probably going to be the final video of Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets. Um, so Dancy Bear, she became a bug. No. no, she was a bug. She became an electric eel. Um, Tinkerbell is now a tiger, sitting at that, uh, that secret box. Oh, I should, I'll talk about the, the game state in a second. Um, Shell, she, she remained an eagle. The animal remained a bird. And Chicky became the mighty dragon. So let's take a look at the why of their transformations for the turn. It, uh, first of all, the group dynamic is it's a two-on-three game. The blue team's generally stronger, except the green team does have Chinky here, who is a, a Mark IV, and, whereas everyone else is Mark III or less, three or two. Um, mainly Mark III's for the, the blue team. And so they're all kind of trying to hit their secret boxes before he can get them. Uh, there, he can really only go after one person this turn, and there's basically three people threatening secret boxes right now. Every single one of the blue team can get to a secret box. Um, Betty, or er, not Betty Crocker, <laughs> uh, Tinkerbell, her name always makes me think of Betty Crocker for some reason, is already stationed right here. She turned into a tiger. Um, Tigers have good mobility and they're decent fighters, uh, so she's kind of preparing to maybe go cheetah again. After this secret box, she can start passing through this gate and uh, take more secrets. Um, Dancing Bear here, she turned into an electric eel. However, she's not in the water yet. Since she was in the air before, she's got to drop down. So a lot's going to de depend on initiative as to whether she can survive. And then um, Shell, she remained an eagle for the mobility. Uh, maybe going to try and take out Danimal, but she could also turn around and hit this secret box as well. Um, so Danimal, he stayed a bird. He's going to try and get some more secrets over there. He could probably get through that gate if his aim is right, or he could get to this one as well. Um, and then Chinky, he became a dragon. So he's kind of got one turn to try and take someone out and even the odds. Uh, chances are he's going to start losing power now because after during this turn because, you know, three of these, three of these chits are all his. So as soon as someone draws a chit, it's going to weaken him. Um, so this is his shot as a dragon. That's why he took it. Um, so a lot's going to depend on the initiative roll. I guess I'll, I'll take care of that now and then we'll look at the track. Chinky was fortunate. He got a good roll. So that means if he rolls anything other than a one on the attack here against Dancing Bear, she's going to be taken out of the game. And I guess I'll just roll that now since he doesn't really have to move to do it. And I don't think he's going to move because he could move wrong and then mess it up. So he's just going to go ahead and attack with his fire. Got a four. Dancing Bear is out. So let's read about her. Um, she's a stockbroker. 
childhood nickname Dancing Bear. Her secret fantasy is to be a prima ballerina and dance with Barishnikov in Russia. She's a chocolate addict with bad breath. Or no, she doesn't like people with bad breath. She wants their breath to smell like chocolate. She'd like to meet Al Capone. Her personal motto is follow your dreams. Her mo she's most proud of her flute playing ability. She's studious, motivated, considerate, and musical. Dancing Bear. So long, Dancing Bear. You did your job. Um, now it's time for everyone else to act. So quit, quit hogging the limelight. Tinkerbell is about to reveal a secret here from this secret box. And this is the final one of the secret box. And yep, it belongs to Chinky. We could have guessed that. There weren't a lot left. We have three empty secret boxes now, so there must be two for Chinky in here. Chinky's reputation in high school is athletic. Three words that describe him are friendly, happy, and understanding. Chinky. The turn ends with a pair of miscalculations. First, a shell going for Danimal. She got one space shy of him. He was right there. Danimal, his goal was to get through this gate. Completely misshot it, but he's kind of set up better for next turn to get to this secret box. So it wasn't that bad. It would have been a lot better for them if he had been able to score the secret. Um, the game is a lot closer than I thought it was going to be at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I could see how anyone could win. It's closer to kind of how it felt towards the beginning of the game. During the middle, I kind of thought the blue team had it, but we're seeing things have turned. Okay, another round. It's really getting down the wire here. Uh, we have only four players, so they're all on the map. All their information's here. You can see where the hit points are laid out. Chinky's underneath this black one, and you can see how their energy is. It's all kind of pretty tightly bunched. The animal is definitely weaker than everyone else, but um, he's a he's very likely going to reveal some secrets this turn, and Cheeky can also as well. So, and Shell's not in a position to do that. Um, Tinkerbell, however, is. She turned into a cheetah, Tinkerbell, bloop, and Danimal stayed a bird, and the other two are eagles. Pretty simple. Uh, turn order, Tinkerbell got, got to go first, which was very likely. Cheetahs are faster than eagles, or they're more reactive, apparently. Um, unfortunately for Shell, who's kind of on attack duty against the other player's persons, uh, got last. So... They're both going to get an opportunity to reveal secrets before she can do anything. Tinkerbell has just danced like a dancing bear, like a fairy bear. She did a kind of a weird loop-de-loop. -loop. It kind of got shattered, but it worked. Just barely, she made it through the gate twice. So she gets to roll twice. If she rolls Danimal twice, um, then he is going to be out of the game because... One time we'll take him to Acolyte or Mark 1, and the other one will remove him. If she roll, rolls Chinky twice, then she's only going to end up with one secret from him because he's already gotten one taken from the House of Secrets. All right, so we'll do one, two, three, Danimal, four, five, six, Chinky. That's Danimal. And that's Chinky. So they both get demoted. Um, doesn't get to remove Danimal, which is too bad for her because... Uh, by removing him, that would decrease the number of secrets that uh, the blue team gives up this turn. But still, not a bad little loop-de-loop-de-loop. -loop -loop. An unusual fact about Danimal is he's a notorious party animal. Hmm. Could you have guessed that? And then Chinky, we're going to find out his secret fantasy to win a bundle at the racetrack. All right. Some imagination. Well, Chinky collided with the secret box. Uh, he's going to get to open it up if he survives, and if he dies, we'll let him open it up anyway as a consolation prize for death. Um, it's a similar situation as Skibby. He obviously didn't learn from her mistakes, and neither did I, because <laughs> I probably did the exact same flight path. I don't know. Um, but he, he only survives on anything on a one, basically. Uh, actually, yeah, definitely only survives on a one because birds fly so fast that they run into something, they die. Um, so we'll roll and then we'll reveal our secret here. Yeah, that's gonna really mess up the, the green team's chances. I, I don't know if they're gonna be able to come back from this losing Chinky as well, but let's see what their revelation is. That's gonna take Tinkerbell down. So I guess we'll 
reveal her secret, and then reveal um, Chinky's card. So her unusual fact is she got a Buckingham, oh no, she sh we shouldn't see that, sorry. Um, pet peeve, people who don't know how to drive, <laughs> like Chinky, the race car driver. I'd like to meet Arsenio Hall. He's not a race car driver. He wants to be. Skibby was a race car driver. Um, oh, that's funny. Anyone involved with racing crashes and dies. Um, her personal motto is, God is the answer to all of our questions. What's your personal motto? God. So... She has two personal mottos. Um, most proud of her degree in French. Reputation in high school is Jock. What was your reputation in high school? God. Three words that describe her are spunky, outgoing, independent. If you were to ask the question of her, she could only respond God, and that wouldn't answer the question unless you believe in the Trinity. All right, so now we look at Chinky, our dearly departed man. Constable Chinky. Secret fantasy to win a bundle at the racetrack. Saved a person from a burning car. Oh, he's a hero. Um, people who smoke in restaurants is his pet peeve. He'd like to meet Linda Evans. Personal motto, eat, drink, and be merry. Just don't smoke. Most proud of being in good health after four heart attacks. Whew. Reputation in high school athletic. Friendly, happy, understanding, dead. Chinky. That's going to leave Danimal all by himself. Um... Dang, I don't know how he can pull this one out, but I guess he can just try, right? Can't fault the Dan man for trying, right? Danimal successfully passed through the gate, and it's there's a way that he could possibly squeak this one out. And what that way consists of is first he has to roll a Tinkerbell, which would bring her down to um, the final level of uh, bring her down to a Mach 1. And then if he passes through the gate again, she'd be eliminated, then be down to him and Shell. Problem is, Shell is still much stronger than him, so even that would be kind of a toss up. So we'll do one to three as Tinkerbell, four, five, or six as Shell. He did get Tinkerbell. So let's find out an unusual fact about Tinkerbell. And we already learned this, so it's, I'm glad we rolled the die and got her. Um, she got a Buckingham Palace guard to wink at her. All right. All right, we're on a new turn. We have an eagle, Danimal, going up against a rock, Shell, and a wolf, which is Tinkerbell here. Danimal gets to act first, so he's got to hope to get a secret um, revealed before he gets assaulted by the rock. Hopefully that secret belongs to Shell. Danimal succeeded in a nice little loop. Did Danimal. And so this die roll is going to really decide a lot in this game here. One to three, it's Tinkerbell. Four, five, or six, it's our friend Shell. Here we go. Shell. That's going to allow Tinkerbell to still act because she's not eliminated. She would have been eliminated had he rolled her. So Shell... Let's see, I don't think any of her, um, yeah, so let's take a look at her unusual fact. She was a missionary to the Philippines and visited an island with only 20 people on it. Wonder how many she converted. All right, so that's going to bring her down to M status, which is M2, Mach 2. Her turn, no, Tinkerbell's turn. And Tinkerbell had no trouble getting the um, final House of Secrets secret from Danimal, and that's his secret fantasy. Girls, girls, girls. So that's going to bring him down to A. Now, in order to get any more of his secrets, they're going to be in here, because she's gotten both of them from the House of Secrets, I do believe. Yeah. Yep, because we have his unusual fact already. So that means his pet peeve and who he'd like to meet is in here. That would get rid of him. The other way the blue team can get rid of him is just to have Shell destroy him, which is what she's going to try to do now. It'll be easier since his hit points are down to four, but I don't know that the assault table that Shell's going to be using is going to be enough to get rid of him. Nope, the most she can do is three damage, and that is... No, she's a rock. If she rolls a six, if she can get to him and rolls a, roll a six, then that's going to do four, and, and then the game's over. Another round of transformation. People were pretty limited as to what they could do. Um, Tinkerbell's only choice was to be a rat. Her goal is to head over here and try and get the final, um, 
the final secret of Danimal, which kind of makes the game seem like a foregone conclusion. Danimal's got to either, he's got to kind of bypass Tinkerbell and get to either this secret box and get rid of Tinkerbell and then get rid of Shell, uh, or else get another secret against Shell and bring her down a little more. Um, yeah, he's in a tough position. But he's going to try. He stayed as an eagle. Uh, he didn't really have a lot of choice either. Um, he could have gone to a bird, I suppose. But to get back to eagle would not be possible for him once he leaves eagle because there's a path cost. And then um, Shell, she stayed as a rock. And this is going to be, I think, her final turn as a rock, maybe. Uh, I have to work it all out. But uh, Danimal gets to act first, so we'll see what he does. Danimal made it through the gates again, so we'll roll the die. If, if Tinkerbell's out, he could still be in this game. It's just going to be a matter of a cat and mouse chase between he and Shell to see if he can get to that final secret box or not. Um, so we're going to roll one to three. Tinkerbell's out of the game. Four, five, or six. It's probably Tinkerbell's game to win. Tinkerbell's out of the game. Let's take a look at who she is. Tinkerbell, she's a student. Secret fantasy to marry a French Canadian and live in Quebec City. Unusual fact, she got a Buckingham Palace guard to wink at her. Pet peeve, people who don't know how to drive. She liked to meet Arsenio Hall. God is the answer to all of our questions. She's most proud of her degree in French. Reputation high school jock. Three words that describe Tinkerbell are spunky, outgoing, independent. It's up to Shell now. Win it for the blue team. If she can catch up to Danimal, which seems like shouldn't be too hard given her positioning. And then she can roll well on her attack. She might win it for the blue team. She made it to him with Panache. Alright, if she rolls a six, he's gone. Any other number, and he's just damaged. Here we go. Four. So that is going to mean three damage to him. He's on his last legs, his last wings. And he gets to counterattack. He attacks at two versus two. He's on the zero column. He needs to get four or higher to do anything to shell. And he didn't break through her shell. All right, shell's an eagle, the animal's a bird. A lot is gonna depend on this initiative roll. We'll go ahead and roll the bird first. I tend to go the lower ones first because the lower reaction rates first because if they tie, then the higher reaction beats them and it just makes it simpler. So we'll do it that way right now on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Ottoman leg one, Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets. All right, he's gonna add two to this. Five. That's a good roll. He's been rolling pretty well in initiative lately. That's going to put him at a seven initiative, which means Shell has to roll a four or higher. She does. I think she's pretty much got the game. Let's look at the attack table before we do this historic roll on this edition of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Ottoman Leg 1. Tattlebots will know your secrets. Um... Yeah, the bird has no defense. So if she rolls a four or higher, the game is hers. It's down to this die roll on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Ottoman leg one. Tattlebots, we'll know your secrets. And that's it. So what's happening is she gets to move first. All she has to do is attack him since she's in the space. And he's destroyed. There's nothing he can do because her attack... She just has to do one damage. And the blue team has won it, so that means Shell, Jules from Up With People, Tinkerbell, and Dancing Bear are going to move along to the Ottoman Leg 2, Kriegbot, which is going to be the fi finale of this kind of section of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament, where we have all of these here without the loser's bracket. By finale, I mean it's going to be the last video of that series. So they're going to play this game. But first, next, on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament, there's going to be one-on-one -on -one grudge match. Betty Crocker versus Pinky to end the Brawlty leg. Then we'll flip back over here to the Ottoman leg 
and finish off that section and then we're going to go into the loser's bracket. Actually, as part of that, we're going to go into the loser's bracket. Well, that was an exciting game. It came right down to the wire. It seemed like the blue leg was dominant for the most part, but uh, it did end up a lot closer than I expected. I thought they'd be a lot more dominant. Um, a lot of that probably had to do with my inexperience with Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets. Not sure if I'm going to play this game again and again. It was kind of very specialized to the tournament with the whole secret revealing, revealing and everything, but um, I think the, the Techno Witch's movement does add something to the Shapeshifters game. Um, also makes it... I don't know. It would be, it'd probably be a more interesting because of that whole movement mechanism to do it with other humans instead of do it solitary. It's just a little bit tedious to do it solitary, though it does add some unexpectedness, you know, because you can't always move where you want to move, and that's fun. Um, probably one I want to try with other people. Tattlebots will know your secrets, so it'll be fun to see this team move on. They're going to have to break into two, two teams in the next game, Kriegbot. Um, It'll be fun to see what the pairings end up being. I'll probably do a random rather than let them choose. We'll see you next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament where we'll finish up the Brawlty leg with a grand conclusion. That's been a long leg. I know you've really enjoyed seeing them pummel each other. Uh, I hope you enjoy seeing them pummel each other one last time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Brawlty leg six, I think, is what we're going to be at. Maybe seven. I don't really remember. And you'll be so excited to see the special game we're gonna play! Geek, 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 geek.